Hello, my name is Boyd Goodex from Southern Beef Technology Services, and this video is on understanding the breed plan completeness of performance product. So the first thing about completeness of performance is performance re recording is really important. Trait records underpin all forms of genetic evaluation in livestock, and that includes when we move to genomics. So even though we're getting DNA samples and information from those DNA samples, we still need the trait information so that we can correlate the two things and see what the DNA is telling us. So trait recording remains very, very important. So Breed Plan has the completeness of performance herd rating system. So what it does is it summarizes the quantity of pedigree and performance information that individual herds submit to Breed Plan. And there's two major components of this. There's the report and the star rating. So the report, it provides a summary of all the information um, that is provided to breed plan. So a range of statistics are provided for animal details and for five trait groupings. The trait groupings being weights, carcass, birth, fertility and other. Then there's the star rating. So it is calculated based on the proportion of calves within a herd that are recorded for each trait or have their animal details recorded. Now this is done over a fi fixed five year period so that we can get a nice average. Different criteria are actually used for different breed societies and the reason for this is not all breed societies have the same emphasis within their breed and also they don't always have the same EBVs reported. For instance some breeds have docility reported, some don't. We don't want to penalise those breeds that don't have it on this because if it's not available, it's a bit unfair to penalise them for it. So each herd then receives a star rating on a 0 to 5 scale, including half stars that summarises the completeness of their performance information. So that goes from a 0 to 5, as you can see right down the bottom of the screen here. So where do you access your completeness of performance report? It is available in your download area on Internet Solutions and it is made available in the month following when you submit performance data. So every time there's an analysis done and you've submitted data that's come into the analysis, a completeness of performance report is produced for you. It is also produced annually. This is usually in July, regardless of whether you have submitted performance data or not. And please contact staff at BreedPlan if you do not have a login for your internet solutions or are, un or are unable to remember your password. We're here to help you. So where do you access your COP star rating? Well, it's available on page 6 of your report. It is also avail available for some breed societies on the member inquiry area of internet solutions. As you can see here on the Herefords website, you can actually bring up a list of all herds in this breed based on what level of star rating they have. So now let's look at how to interpret your report and star rating. So you start off on your report, you've got a cover page, it gives your, um, your herd and it also gives the year, the date when the report was produced. Then the next three pages are all introductory notes, so they're basically what I'm telling you now, but in more detail and in obviously written format. Then we go on to the next page, and it's a bit of a summary. So you've got all of the, the six columns here that I was talking about earlier, so the five trait groupings and the animal details. So you've got that across all of your years down the left-hand side to see how well you were going and how you progressed. You're rating for those each of those years and because the star rating is actually an average of the, a five year thing, this is the average down the bottom here as well and you can see what the, the star rating is in the little badge at the bottom. Now you may notice that in this example the calving year is 2010 to 2014 for the five years. It's a bit out of date but we actually do not bring it completely up to date. It's always two years behind. So if you're talking about we're here in 2018, you're talking about your 2017 calves, we don't actually include them in this because they haven't had a chance to be old enough to be recorded for the 600-day wait. So we would actually be penalising them 
for something they can't help. So that's why we always start to animals that are two years old in each and the star rating. Then we go on to the summary um, graphs here. So it's the same information, but presented in graph format, which a lot of people pr prefer. And you can see for, this is again for the five year period, how this herd is performing for each of these traits in that five, across those five years and what proportion of their calves are recorded for each trait. And you can see here, obviously, you've got males and females, so one slightly over 50%, one slightly below 50%, they sum to 100. And then we break down the sexes into males and females, because some people record males for some things they don't record females for. Now, of course, there's a really obvious one we've got here. It's called scrotal circumference. It's pretty hard to find it in females. On to animal details here. This is going through in a similar format, year down the side, and we're talking about this gives you the actual figures of how many animals were recorded in that year, then number of males, number of females gives you a sex ratio. Then we've got things like date of birth, sire details, dam details. They tend to be 100% or very close to it because most societies won't actually let you register an animal unless you get those th those three things. Then we have mating type, so um, if you're doing AI and ET as well as your natural matings that will show up here. This herd, you can notice, it doesn't do AI every year and it hasn't done ET. And because it hasn't done ET, there's no recipient dam information being submitted either. So then we go into the graphs of, of the exact same information done graphically. Again, so yeah, hundred percent of sire, dam, date of birth done, and then you come across the mating type totals to a hundred percent. But you know, grey here being the number of calves from AI matings, white being from natural, and black if there was ET, which there isn't for this herd. Now we go on to weight traits. So for all the traits, we, we've all do have the um, tables of information with the actual numbers just like we did for the animal information but we've also got these graphs as well and I'm just going to show you these graphs to keep moving through and not repeating myself so you can see here on these graphs you know how, how recording's been done you know this idea being missed for 200 day weight and not very many um, mature cow weights have been done for this herd Typically, we often see that there's a decrease in recording from 200 to 400 to 600. And that's to be expected as more calves are culled out of the herd or die. There's going to be less available to measure, so that's not unexpected. Now we're on to carcass traits. Um, got the, the four graphs here. Now quite often these four graphs are identical. That's because when you get the scanner in, he measures all four from the... At, at once, so you would expect the same animal would have all four traits done. Then we move on to birth and fertility traits. So, you know, same kind of logic here. You can see they, this herd, the, they're recording most most years they're recording calving ease. There's one year, 2011, where they haven't. Um, likewise, birth weights, they're missing the odd one. That's life. AI date, well this comes back to what I mentioned earlier. This herd isn't doing AI every year, so you wouldn't expect AI dates to be reported every year. Scrotal circumference, um, here we go, they're, they're doing it a bit more recently, but and they did some back in 04, but they missed a number of years. And days to calving would obviously be something that, if they're interested in, then they're not actually recording, so they would need to look at that. And then we move on to other traits. So we have docility for our southern breed societies. We have flight time for the tropicals. We have structure for those breeds that are recording that kind of thing. DNA, this is a bit of a confusing one for, for a lot of people. It's not actually genomic um, information that we're recording. It's back to the old gene star information that we used to record. Um, and then there's net feed intake for the people who are recording that, but that mainly comes from progeny test or bin programs. And 
on this page here we actually have how all this information is put together to form the score so you know for instance in animals here so if we have people who are recording over 95 percent of um, their date of birth their sire their dam they, they get a 10 for those three things multiplied by 1.25 on the far right added to the sex ratio and recipient dam information they get and that's their score out of 50 they get for animal and they do that all the way through for everything else and then at the bottom you can see for this breed now these weightings and everything change from breed to breed so don't assume this will automatically apply to yours but once you get your final score you then look down here and see where your score fits and you see what um, rating you end up with so if anyone has any feedback please feel free to con contact us here at southern beef technology services or tropical beef technology services and thank you very much for listening to us all